watch Travis Michael. Check out what I got back. My field piece. Man, I missed this thing. Originally, I made a video on that when I sent it in for repair. Uh, that was about the beginning of July. I think it was about a seven week process from shipping my old one back and uh, to the point where, I, where they shipped it back to me and I received it. It was about seven weeks. Uh, I got it back at the year, end of August, just in time for the end of summer here in New Jersey. But um, it looks like they just gave me a brand new one. You know, for 275 is what they charged me. I had to pay for the, the shipping in there. They paid for the return shipping. Um, so I think it was like $23 for shipping there. So for under 300 bucks, they gave me a brand new set. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that considering, uh, you know, it's probably 600 brand new from the uh, supply house. Um, they also sent me new, actually, I, uh, I got the box here that it came in. I haven't even, the first time I've used it, I haven't even taken them out until today. They gave me new temperature probes, one of the temperature clamps. The only thing they didn't give me was a new carrying case. Um, I don't know if that's because I didn't send mine back. I did send the other temperature clamps back, and maybe that's why they sent me new ones, but... Um, I still have it and it's in, it's in decent shape, so it's not a big deal. But I'll tell you, it's nice. Uh, if you watch my previous video, you know, I didn't, my, my hook broke. So I didn't have any, I couldn't I couldn't hang it anywhere. I always had to lay it on top of something. You know, that's probably one of the reasons why it didn't hold up, didn't last so long. But I'll tell you what, I'm, you know, happy to be working with this again. In the meantime, I was working with, you know, that's my old pro set, my analog set, the gauges. And you know, these work pretty good. I got uh, the Hilmar, the temperature clamps. It's got the, the dual clamps with the one little screen. And those work pretty good, but you know, you gotta do some math in your head to figure out your self-cooling superheat. You know, I guess it's the uh, old fashioned method. Well, not really, I guess the old fashioned method would you know, ask the old timers. It's just, uh, was it 68, 225 and beer can cold on the suction, you know. So anyway. Working on a leak check on this unit. I'm not gonna go too crazy going into this. I've done a bunch of videos on leak checks, so if you wanna check those out, you know, just check my other videos out. But uh, I just wanna show you, man, this thing was a real pain in the ass trying to find this leak and getting in there and fixing it. Um, I ended up having to take the top of the machine apart and slide in the condenser fan section back to access it. And uh, we'll hop up there now. I'm gonna show you exactly where it was. Let's take a closer look at where I found the leak. It's the discharge line going into the coil header. And this was a real pain to get to. You see what I had to do here. I had to pull the whole top cover off of the unit. Luckily I was able to slide it out just far enough and I should be able to get in there with my torch and fix that no problem. And here's after I fixed it. You can see all the extra braze I was able to get on there. Luckily I was able to just get the torch in here, angle the flame that way and keep it away from the wires and it actually wasn't too bad you know, I can only imagine though if you, if you had something on the bottom there trying to get in there this middle panel here we'll hop down and I'll look at that more there ain't too much access between the coils here and this middle panel back there I was having a hard time getting out I had to pull the screws out but some silicone the bottom of it and it just wasn't budging and I, after messing with it for a little bit I realized I'm like you know what that's probably not even gonna help me out um, but I wanted to show you guys, you know, looking at this machine, it's got it's four compressors, but it's two circuits, you know, there's two tandem sets. And we got two, two condenser coils here. You know, you would think maybe one is for one system, one is for the other, but that's not the case. Uh, they're split in the middle. So the system I was working on is so circuit two is the top half of each coil, and circuit one is the bottom half. So the way this coil is piped is discharge off the compressor pipes into the far coil right that's where I had the leak and then it makes a pass through that coil and comes back into another header that gets piped into the second coil and then it comes back and when it makes a pass through there and then it comes out as the liquid on the liquid line could you imagine if I had the same leak down there below that'd be much more difficult it'd be taking much more apart to get back there or you'd be climbing all back into in this area trying to fix it I'm sure it's doable but Tell you what, when I found that leak, I was kind of happy uh, that it was in the spot to where it was. Got a new liquid line dryer. Just got to clamp it down. Left the old sight glass. I had a new one, but there was enough space here, and I wrapped this pretty good, so I didn't uh, didn't overheat it. So now I just got to let the vacuum pump run. 
put together the unit and I'm gonna be charging it up. If you're not currently a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button. If you like the videos, give me a thumbs up. Got any questions or comments, you want to see a video or anything, just comment down below. I'll get back to you. Follow me on Twitter at underscore Travis Michael. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next one.